Don't you think that the root cause of the problems must be sought in the prevailing international order or the way the world is governed? I would like to draw your kind attention to the following questions. Who abducted forcefully tens of millions of people from their homes in Africa and other regions of the world during the dark period of slavery, making them a victim of their materialistic greed in the United States and in Europe, who imposed colonialism for over four centuries upon this world, and who occupied lands and massively plundered resources of other nations, destroyed talents and alienated native languages, cultures, and identities of nations, who triggered the First and Second World Wars that left 70 millions killed and hundreds of millions injured or homeless, who created the wars in the Korean Peninsula and in Vietnam, who imposed through deceits and hypocrisy, the Zionists, and over 60 years of war, homelessness, terror, and mass murder on the Palestinian people and on the countries of the region, who imposed and supported for decades military dictatorships and totalitarian regimes on Asian, African, and Latin American nations, and established friendly relations with all of them, who used atomic bomb against defenseless people and stockpile thousands of warheads in their arsenals, whose economies rely on raging wars and selling arms, who provoked and encouraged Saddam Hussein to invade and impose an eight-year war on Iran and who assisted and equipped him to deploy chemical weapons against our cities and our people, who used the mysterious September 11th incident as a pretext to attack Afghanistan and Iraq, killing, injuring, and displacing millions in two countries with the ultimate goal of bringing into its domination the Middle East and its oil resources. Who undermined the Bretton Woods system and printed trillions of dollars without the backing of gold reserves or equivalent currency, a move that triggered inflation worldwide and was intended to prey on the economic gains of other nations? What country's military spending exceeds annually a thousand billion dollars more than the military budgets of all countries of the world combined? Which governments are the most indebted ones in the world? And who is the government that threatens all nations and countries with any excuse? Who dominates the policy-making establishments of the world economy? Who are responsible for the world economic recession and are imposing its consequences in the United States and in Europe on Asia, Africa, Latin America, and all other nations? Which governments are ever ready to drop thousands of bombs on other countries but ponder and hesitate to send a bit of food aid to famine-stricken people in Somalia or in other places? Who are the ones dominating the Security Council which is ostensibly responsible to safeguard the international security? There exist tens of other similar questions, and of course, the answers are clear. The majority of nations and governments of the world have had no role in the creation of the current global crisis, and as a matter of fact, were themselves the victims of such policies. It is as lucid as daylight that the same slave masters and colonial powers 
that once triggered the two world wars have caused widespread miseries and disorder with far-reaching effects across the globe since then. And they continue to control the international political centers and the Security Council. Dear colleagues and friends, do these arrogant powers really have the competence and ability to run or govern the world? Or is it acceptable that they call themselves as the sole defender of freedom, democracy, and human rights, while they militarily attack and occupy other countries? Can the flower of democracy blossom from NATO's missiles, bombs, or guns? Ladies and gentlemen, if some European countries still use the Holocaust after six decades as the excuse to pay fine or ransom to the Zionist, should it not be an obligation upon the slave masters or colonial powers to pay reparations to the affected nations? If the damage and losses of the period of slavery and colonialism were indeed compensated, what would happen to the manipulators and behind-the-scenes political powers in the United States and in Europe? Will there remain any gaps between the North and the South? If only half of the military expenditures of the United States and its allies in NATO is cut to help solve the economic problems in their own countries, will they be witnessing any symptom of the economic crisis? What would happen if the same amount is allocated to poor nations? What is the justification for the presence of hundreds of U.S. military and intelligence bases in different parts of the world, including 268 bases in Germany, 124 in Japan, 87 in South Korea, 83 in Italy, 45 in the United Kingdom, and 21 in Portugal, and hundreds of bases in other parts of the world. Does this mean anything other than military occupation? Don't the bomb deployed in the state bases undermine the security of other nations? Ladies and gentlemen, the main question is the search for the root cause of such attitudes. The prime reason should be sought in the beliefs and tendencies of the establishment. An assembly of people in contradiction with the inner human instincts and disposition who also have no faith in God and in the path of the divine prophets replace their lust for power and materialistic ends with heavenly values. To them only power and wealth prevail and every attempt must bring into focus these sinister goals. Oppressed nations have no hope to restore or protect their legitimate rights against these powers. These powers seek their progress, prosperity, and dignity through the poverty, humiliation, and annihilation of others. They consider themselves superior to others, enjoying special privileges or concessions. They have no respect for others and easily violate the rights of all nations and governments. They proclaim themselves as the indisputable custodians of all governments and nations through intimidation, recourse to threat and to force and the abuse of international mechanisms. They insist on imposing their lifestyle and beliefs on others. They officially support racism. They weaken countries through military interventions and destroy their infrastructures in order to plunder their resources by making them all the more dependent. 
they sow the seeds of hate and hostility among nations and people of different pursuits in order to prevent them from fulfilling their goals of development and progress. All cultural identities, lives, values, and wealth of nations, human values, women, children, and the youth are sacrificed by their hegemonistic tendencies and the inclination to enslave and captivate other nations. Hypocrisy and deceit are allowed to secure their interests and imperialistic intentions. Drug trafficking and killing of innocent human beings are also allowed in pursuit of such diabolic goals. Despite NATO's presence in the occupied Afghanistan, there has been a dramatic increase in the production of illicit drugs in this country. They tolerate no question or criticism, and instead of presenting a reason for their violations, they always put themselves in the position of a claimant by using their imperialistic media network, which is under the influence of colonialism, they threaten anyone who questions the Holocaust and September 11th with sanctions and military action. Last year, when the need to form a fact-finding team to undertake a thorough investigation concerning the hidden elements involved in September 11th incident was brought up, an idea which is also endorsed by all independent governments and nations as well as by the majority in the United States, my country and myself came under pressures and threats by the government of the United States. Instead of assigning a fact-finding team, they killed the main perpetrator and threw his body into the sea. Would it not have been reasonable to bring to justice and try openly the main perpetrator of the incident in order to identify the elements and reason behind the safe space provided for the invading aircraft to attack the twin World Trade Towers? Why should it not have been allowed to bring him into trial to help recognize those who launched terrorist groups and brought wars and other miseries into the region. Is there any classified information that must be kept secret? They view Zionism as a sacred notion or ideology, and any question concerning its foundation and history is condemned by them as an unforgivable sin. However, they endorse and allow sacrilegious and insult against beliefs of other divine religions, dear colleagues and friends. Real freedom, justice, dignity, well-being and lasting security are the rights of all nations. These values 